One of the reasons why I'm out here in the woods today, besides the fact that I really like being out in the woods, is uh, to test this knife. This is the Yak Kit KNV3. I won this knife in a giveaway. Um, got it on Friday, sharpened it, and I couldn't wait to get out in the woods and uh, see what it can do. Only things I've done with it so far is to uh, baton through a few small pieces of wood uh, and cut an aluminium can which I found out here. But I assume this will take more than one outing. So in the end I'll just uh, mash up all the videos together and post them as one. Let me show you the knife. This was designed as a hunting knife. It has a kydex sheath which does a very good job at holding the knife in. Even if you undo these lashes, the knife won't go anywhere. It's relatively easy. I mean, I, would, I should say really easy to take out. And there's a soft click when you put the knife back in the sheath. Plus, it does not rattle inside the sheath at all, which I like. It has a Cordura backing that is attached to the Kydex sheath with four screws. These holes are Molly and Teclock compatible and you can mount the sheath on either the left hand side or the right hand side, whichever you prefer. Plus, you can put this on your belt or take it off your belt without taking your belt off. Just uh, <coughs> open this, which is held together by Cordura. Now, here I would prefer also a snap cap like you have on these lashes here. These are not meant to hold the knife in the sheath, I think, because the Kydex sheath does a good enough job for that, but more to hold the knife on your side. I like the slim design of it. And, uh, well, having some problems. And it is relatively a small blade, which will fit just about anywhere. Very appealing. Also, I like the slightly greenish color of, uh, of the handle. Now to the knife. I'm sure a lot of you saw this and said, well, that looks a lot like the handle of the F1. And I also think the same thing. However, the blade doesn't. This one's shorter, for one thing, and it has more belly. It's a different shape of blade, which I really like. Now, when this came to me, um, it came used, it was dull with a very high edge angle, about um, 35, 40 degrees per side, and it had a few chips in it. I've cleaned it off, um, reduced the edge angle to about a 20 degree per side, and sharpened it. It was um, relatively easy to get sharp. Modifying it, it wasn't that difficult, but it wasn't that hard either. I've had more trouble with uh, other steels such as Condors 1075 or whatever they use. And um, it was, it was um, much easier to modify than, I don't know, S30V or something else. But not as easy to modify as OS 8 or OS 8A. I'm going to also put the name of uh, the steel in the description because I can't remember it. 9CR or 18CR something MOV, not sure. It's supposed to be rust resistant. Now, so far, I batoned this through a few pieces of wood and cut an aluminium can. <laughs> and uh, I'm waiting to see on how it does. This being a hunting knife, it does have a short blade and I don't expect it to be able to tackle on the same tasks as my SE4 or Bravo 1. But for what it is, so far I like it, and I'll see how it does. I have seen um, one guy review it, and he batoned it through a few pieces of wood. During the process of that, he hit the handle very hard with his baton, and the handle cracked open, 
and you could see the tank so that's not such a good idea by comparison I have hit my F1 numerous times on the handle while batoning and nothing happened maybe at some point I will get my F1 and I'll make a comparison between the two but for me this is except the handle I mean there's the handle and the blade and the accessories except the handle it's a different knife with a different purpose in mind making two sticks out of one that's a very common bushcraft task and you can do that with a folder or a fixed blade where they are set apart is that most times folders will not be as comfortable but between fixed blades you could say that a different grind is better a different edge angle is better and of course the sharpness of the blade always makes a difference also the handle now this handle like I said is a rubber handle and it is very soft um, even though it has this beak here it is rather soft so in the chest lever grip it will not bother me as much not as much as I thought actually now from experience I can tell you one thing this is a rather thin handle and it will bother me when I will make feather sticks out of harder wood and I will have to use this hammer grip forward grip and push my hand sometimes my the weight of my whole body into the handle especially with very hard tough wood <laughs> like uh, dogwood it will tire my hand because I will have to squeeze it really hard and I won't have the necessary thickness in the handle the best handle for that is um, that I've worked with is um, Abelias's Boreal superb handle for a woodworking knife especially for harder tasks but I do like it and I am trying to keep in mind the fact that this was designed as a hunting knife and in my opinion it would make a good backup knife so far now I do intend to baton it I do intend to make feather sticks with it and I hope it survives the batoning why baton it's not really necessary to baton there are better ways of splitting wood than batoning your knife but batoning is just a a good test for a knife you see this has a rather thick spine and if this spine cannot handle a couple of wax well something wrong with the heat treatment and I don't think I'll ever rely on batoning to get my firewood pick it off the ground make a few feather sticks and if you have to split a huge log just make yourself a few wedges and um, baton them start off with your knife then baton the wedge through the piece of wood you split it but batoning is fun and it's always a good test for knives now this might not be the perfect piece of wood to make wood shavings <laughs> it did sit amongst other pieces of wood and it was very wet you can see it's still wet and dirty that's all right you're not always gonna find a great piece of wood I could split this and uh, I think I would <clears throat> since this is a test of the knife why not split it
I don't have a good batoning surface and the wood does curve there. So I'm just gonna be content with this. And maybe try to work off this. But this is not really a batoning test. I mean, uh, any knife should be able to baton through this. Let me just turn you off, <laughs> turn the camera off and uh, turn it back on when I'm done. Now, except for some shavings that ran downhill, this is it. If you want to make some nice um, shavings that you could light with your ferro rod, you really don't need pressure or squeezing the knife in your hand very hard there. All you need is control. Hold the knife loosely and uh, know where your edge angle is, where the knife starts biting in the wood. And just very lightly shave off the wood. Now, Uh, this knife was shaving sharp when I started this day in the woods and it still still feels sharp uh, whether it shaves or not I don't know well <laughs> it does it does take off a few hairs uh, but really, that has nothing to say because what did I do? I uh, batoned through this piece of wood, a few other small pieces of wood, and I've shaved this piece of wood. So that's not going to be as strenuous on the edge as uh, some people might claim. If your knife can't do this and still be sharp, it doesn't have to be shaving sharp. That just uh, matters how the edge started. Then you have a problem. But, so far, I'd say I um, did a good enough job. What I really like to do with this knife is add a pinky lanyard and chop with it. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is too small to chop with. That is why I, I really like my SE4. It's a um, good worker, still has the weight to chop. I'm, guessing this one would also get a bite in you know but it's not a chopper I'm sure I mean you can even chop with a mora if you're inclined to but that really would be a waste of energy uh, the best way to get through a piece of wood like this um, if you can't chop with a knife and all you have is a knife is get a big piece of wood and just baton it either you beaver your way through it like this you know on the side on the side or a good test which I don't recommend you doing is to just put the piece of wood on a relatively solid surface and you cross grain baton Some people argue that cross grain batoning can really damage your blade. And it can, of course. If uh, it's too hard, it'll just snap. But with a blade this thick, if the heat treatment is done right, there is no reason why a blade should uh, break. Oh, and batoning small pieces of wood. Wow. It's 
really not a problem. Let's try this. I think this is out. Ah, no, it's not. I don't know if you could pick it up on the camera. I actually hit the blade on an angle. It went in on an angle, but I didn't hit it perpendicular, but on an angle. And uh, except for the fact that it's jammed in there, it's fine. If you want to not risk breaking it. Hit it perpendicular. Last chance of you snapping the blade or bending it if you hit it perpendicular. Uh, batoning does not really damage the edge as much as some people claim. I would uh, say that chopping damages the edge much more than batoning or cutting shavings of wood. This one still takes off hairs. Not as well as it did in the beginning, but <laughs> no knife does. Other than uh, <laughs> beating this knife through a lot of different size pieces of wood, either splitting them or um, cross grain batoning it. it, didn't do much. Um, so, what I want to know now is because as much as I would love to not sharpen this knife, take it out next week, I really know that I'm not going to be able to keep myself from stropping it to see how fast I can get the edge back to shaving sharp. Um, one thing I can tell you is I have a small chip in the blade. I don't know if it will show up on camera, probably won't. If I turn it into a light, you might see a small white spot right there, right here. Um, that is where I cut the aluminum can. And uh, the edge probably dulled there and I hit something or maybe it was a piece of dirt because that was not the main contact area um, when I was chopping or when I was batoning and definitely not when I was uh, slicing off wood. But now the edge does grab hair and like I said, what I did here is really not a a test where you could say, oh well, the guy worked with the knife for 30 minutes and he knows everything about it. But there's more to come. Now, I have my little sharpening kit that I keep in here in my backpack whenever I come out in the woods to test knives. I also like to test uh, how fast I can get them back to shaving sharp. And this knife has not lost that much edge. So, uh, oh, yeah, it's back to shaving sharp. How could I best show you? Truth is, I am running out of uh, arm hair, but we'll get up and uh, I'm hoping you could see that because I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> uh, I am running out of arm hair. Some people do that, uh, you know, um, 
laser, taking off hair, some people wax. We just uh, test knives. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no, this is not the end of it. Uh, so far I like it. I'll have to see what else I can do to it. Maybe carry it for a couple of weeks, use it as a whatever knife and tell you then. Now, in the process of batoning it, I have hit the handle a couple of times. No way around it. And um, the damage does not seem to be that great. But I will keep from uh, hitting the handle as much as I can. And it did not take as much uh, wood on the blade as I thought. So, you can still see it here from the initial hits and then uh, the tip. A nice backup knife most likely a very handy hunting knife uh, and I must say I really like the, the sheath I really like the sheath and how it carries so I guess this is it for part one uh, if you have any questions about it comments suggestions um, just uh, add them in the comment section I will get to them as soon as possible and if you'd like to suggest a good test um, whatever it may be if uh, I can accommodate you I will do that very gladly thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it and as always I wish you all a great day